Malfeasance, soon to be Lumina, Leviathan's Breath, Sleeper Simulant, Arbalest. All sucked, all got a buff, all are pretty damn good now, and at least in some capacity, or at least far more usable than they were about a year ago. A year later, there are still some exotics out of the 70 or so that we have in the game that are just unusable. Whether it just be poor damage or just not being interesting. We're going to take a look at some of the worst exotics in the game and propose ways to make them more interesting or more powerful. This video promises to be a little bit long, so we're just going to jump straight into it with the Whisper of the Worm. You may be surprised that despite Whisper of the Worm's latest buffs, it is still one of the least, the top 10 least used exotics in the entire game. I think the problem is, is that there's just easier ways to get to what it's trying to do. Sleeper Simulant now competing with it directly for a precision frame style of long range solar damage. So maybe outside of just giving it increased damage, what if we made the increased damage be a little bit more interesting? What if Whisper of the Worm, every time you proc to the perk, continuously stacked a buff that gave you more and more damage the longer the Whisper of the Worm continued to reload itself? Essentially just continue to what is effectively like a high impact reserves, but on etheric ammo, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Of course, this would go away after a period of time, but I think this would not only increase its damage, which is what it needs, but it would make it do it in such a way that's interesting. Next is the Prospector. Prospector will continue to slowly fade out of the game while power creep continues to happen. Power creep's not necessarily a bad thing, assuming everything else is slowly getting better with it in the process, which isn't technically power creep, but you know, for layman's term. Rather than what the Prospector does right now, which is when it sticks into a target, it burns them. What if it did the Scorch Cannon thing where the longer you held it, the more damage it would do when you finally release the trigger. This could allow multiple fire teams to fire all on one target and then release when they're ready to go, killing a big target outright. Something, think like a, an unstoppable champion, right? If you stick a whole bunch of this and then wait for somebody to call that they've triggered the unstoppable effect, everyone can release and immediately kill it allowing for very satisfying explosion and immediate dopamine rush directly to the brain hole. Queen Breaker sits in a similar type to Whisper of the Worm, but in a much worse state. It is a very interesting gun. The obvious choice here is just to make it special ammo, but with how Lorenz Driver and Arbalest has been, I am worried about Bungie's capability of making sure that this stays balanced and not just absolutely breaking the game. I think if this were to be a special ammo weapon, dial down the aim assist and increase the flinch that this receives so that it's a little bit more in line with something like a sniper rifle. The weapon is very interesting. It's a very cool gun and I would love to see more of it. It does have some utility baked into it. It does blind targets, but it's much more effective in the heavy ammo slot to just have it just kill a target outright rather than dealing some type of debuff to them. Maybe when we get Arc 3.0, the blinding effect will actually have some use in the game as some type of like setup for another combo. But for right now, special ammo. Darcy is in a very similar spot. Special ammo would be a good way to fix it, but then you compete with things like Cloud Strike, which Cloud Strike is just arguably a better version of Darcy. It's difficult. I think that if Darcy had some type of wall hacking, as that is kind of flavorful for what it's trying to do, Darcy is essentially like a predictive AI that would be cool, yet very dangerous in PvP. If it was a short period of time that you were able to wall hack a target, or maybe it would only allow you to wall hack a target if you were able to trigger the AI assistant and then it only lasted while you were ADSing, it could work. But again, a very, very dangerous idea. This might be one that legitimately just needs to get its damage increased from the ground up. Wave Splitter and other trace rifles like it are starting to get better defined and more experimented with in the game. We now have a non-exotic version of a trace rifle, which is great, and we've seen a lot of success out of it, but not quite enough success to go back to some of the lesser used exotic trace rifles. Wave Splitter definitely sits in that spot. And this will probably get a lot better coming into the Void 3.0 rework, as well as Witch Queen, because it will be able to generate its own orbs of light, as well as it probably will have some type of synergy with some Void weapons in the game, which, you know, Void 3.0, it's just begging, right? But let's assume that that's not the case. I think it'd be cool if Wave Splitter had some type of refraction effect where if you were to shoot one target, a smaller version of the beam would refract to another target causing like half the damage, allowing you to hit multiple targets all at once, making this a little bit better as a crowd control tool while still being able to get orbs of light a little bit easier as it's able to get multi kills much easier as well. Salvation's Grip is one of those exotics that you used once and then never touched again once you got your stasis powers. What do you even do to the Salvation's Grip? It's obviously not meant to be a damage dealer. It's obviously meant to be a utility tool, but that utility is just not worth the exotic slot. What if we played 
further into that idea as a utility based tool. This is something I've talked about in the last time we did one of these videos. What if you could cycle between each version of the stasis grenades that we have? And also we've made those stasis grenades a little bit better. So currently it effectively fires a weird version of the glacier grenade. What if this fired the hunters touch of winter glacier grenade, which is the much bigger, thicker circular band of crystals that obviously would have more crystals for you, more damage all in all, very good. And you could also cycle that to the touch of winter version of the dust field grenade. If you wanted to play into that, or and maybe you wanted to do a cold snap thing. That way you are guaranteed to get synergy out of your stasis build with this particular weapon just from firing it. The other idea is just to allow it to charge a little bit faster and fire a little bit faster just so it's a little bit easier to use. But that's lame, that's kind of boring. I want more stasis crystals. I want more interesting stasis crystals. Skyburner's Oath, a weapon that has a cult following at this point, but probably for the wrong reason. Skyburner's is not necessarily the worst gun in the game, but it is very outclassed by almost everything else. And it suffers from being a scout. I've talked about this idea a lot, and I will continue to champion this idea until Bungie gives it to us. I want Skyburners to have full court. When you're firing from the hip from one side of the map to the other, I want to be able to two shot a guardian at full health. It's got to be a long distance, but that would be so freaking fun if I could mortar strike somebody from one side to the other. And also it would just be a really interesting method of dealing damage to bosses in PvE. We have something similar to that with grenade launchers with full court already, but allowing it to happen from the primary slot. Yeah, that's that's kind of cool. You could even play an entire build built around being far away from enemies. World Line Zero is the granddaddy of Eager Edge skating. World Line Zero used to be the only weapon that would allow us to get intense amounts of speed until Bungie nerfed it, but now it's back with Eager's Edge, so World Line Zero feels like it doesn't really have a place in the game. The obvious solution to this is to just simply give it Eager's Edge and call it a day, but I think that's a little bit boring. Hear me out. If you've ever played Apex Legends, one of the character's abilities, Ash, allows her to essentially create a rift portal that can take herself as well as other allies from one place to another for a little short burst. It's like a sprint distance sort of deal. World Line Zero could do something like that. This would bake into it a little bit of utility and movement, and it would carve out its spot as the king of the Eager's Edge weapons. Eh, but we could also just give it Eager's Edge at the same time, and that would also be pretty cool. Cold Heart's exotic perk is that it is a trace rifle that is severely out of date. Yes, technically it does also increase exponential damage the longer it's held to a target. That damage is just not worth it when you have a plethora of other exotics to play into. So what if we made this trace rifle that is a trace rifle as its exotic perk a little bit more versatile? What if it also had Chain Reaction? This would allow it to not only be an okay tool for dealing continuous damage to a target, but it would also be fantastic for dealing with large groups of enemies as obviously Chain Reaction on a weapon that isn't explosive could be ridiculous. We do have something similar to that right now, and that's called the Agar Scepter. We've seen a lot of success with Agar Scepter. Obviously, the difference between Agar's and the Chain Reaction Cold Heart would be that the Chain Reaction Cold Heart would be straight up damage, whereas Agar Scepter would be freezing and slowing. I would kind of worry that Cold Heart would just be run more than Agar Scepter at that point, but Agar's is definitely still more unique than Cold Heart, as well as it obviously being in different slots, Agar's in the kinetic slot, Cold Heart in the energy slot, so I think it would be okay. Lastly, the Jade Rabbit. Oh my gosh, Jade Rabbit is such a fantastic scout rifle in PvP. It is just a Cadillac, but man, is it boring. This is coming from somebody who uses the weapon quite a bit. I do legitimately believe this weapon is quite good and is a little bit slept on, but yeah, I'll, I'll even be the first to admit that it could use a little bit of love. The previous idea the last time we did this is that this would have an exponential increase in damage, similar to how the Hawk Moon would work, but rather than it being headshots, this would be body shots and it wouldn't be nearly as much, right? So once you got to the end of the magazine, if you were to hit a target with a headshot, it would be a guaranteed kill or at least really close to it, but that takes a lot more shots to do that. And maybe we could give it a little bit of a timer so that it doesn't just, you know, you can't just stack this on a target and then from way downtown kill somebody. Another idea, which I think is a bit more flavorful, which is to allow the Jade Rabbit to add 1% a debuff to a target up to a maximum of 15% per body shot, effectively making this into a weird version of Divinity or something that we're gonna see with the Void 3.0 debuffs that you can apply to a target. It could essentially operate as a filler for damage tools. Obviously in higher end activity, that's not gonna be the best because you're just gonna be able to slap a tether on a target and call it a day. But perhaps in smaller activities, this could be pretty easy to obtain damage debuffs for your team. Let me know what you think of all of these ideas. Let me know if you have any ideas of your own. 
Make sure that you're subscribed. It helps out a lot and pushes dopamine directly into my brain. Bless your faces you one more. and deuces. Here, I'll, I'll join the one with... Uh, Please, we need yeah, one I'll join more. the one with Roland. One of the guys with the enemy team needs to join. Or... Or... Yeah. Yeah. No, he has close strike. No, <laughs> please don't. <laughs> no, please don't. We're seeing. We're perfectly in sync. We're perfectly in sync. Take it, someone. Take a screen.